Hello, not here. Welcome back to Path of Exile. We're playing in the Bestiary League as a solo cell found a marauder that uses Spectral Shield Throw. Eventually we'll become a juggernaut. And then we'll kinda of become tankier. But that is gonna take a little while longer. We find ourselves at the start of the sewers. Sewers are much smaller these days than they used to be. Take a lot less time to traverse through, which is nice because the, the sewers always have felt a little uh, a little long. And I think in 2.0 they even shortened the sewers already. Because in, in, in the one axis I think there was even more in between. Because right now we just know from the slums we go into the sewers, we go to the marketplace. Before 3.0 we had the sewer entrance first one and then we went to the warehouses and then we went downstairs again. And then we went to the marketplace and then we went underneath the marketplace. But I think in 1.0 there was, was another one before the before the warehouses, if I'm remembering that correctly. But then again, that is, is a long time ago. At least, long time as far as games go. So just uh, gotta make forward progress. With a bit of luck, we'll end up somewhere close to the Solaris Temple today. After Solaris Temple, of course, we can continue the journey to uh, defeating General Gravities. Which is mostly useful because you get access to some active skill gems for defeating him. After that we have uh, the library which grants access to a bunch of passive skill gems. And I think there's actually a decent number there. So that's gonna be worth grabbing. Uh, let's see, usually that leads to the exit so let's check out what's over to the sides here. And of course, now closer to the end, we also have uh, Piety and Dominus. And then it is Act 4. Act 4 is where we're gonna get access to the best and brightest gems. Brutality, that's gonna be one of a very important support gem. It's the strongest buff to our damage that we can get. It's also the thing that's gonna force me to be uh, physical only. Also, I think I saw something in here that was beastie. But I accidentally killed it. Such is life. You kill some, you lose some. Hmm. So we got two out of three busts, so then there's probably going to be one more somewhere near the top there. Come on. Yep, good enough. And another yellow beastie. In the next room, that is. Though so this one is called White Fangs, it's not a beast. Here, though, there's something around the corner. Ooh, one of those moles. Nice. Okay. We trap you, we shoot you, we grab you. you are well prepared for the end. This is a fine... I'll have to fight a rare ring. So, so far, I will say... The, uh, the yellows and red mobs, they have been occurring quite a bit. Now, this, this, this week, there's been a lot of complaints about it. Well, there's always complaints about everything, but not one of the specific things was that there's just not that many yellow and rare mobs appearing. Of course, I can't speak as to what the state is of that in maps, because, well, obviously I haven't read maps yet. But just going through the campaign. Seems alright, or at least I seem to be on a decent streak. I mean, uh, for my warm-up today, I just now went into the city of Sarn, ran around a little bit. I got a red mob, I got a yellow mob. Then I walked out of the towns to the slums to find the uh, the way downstairs. I encountered, I think, two yellows on my way to the to the sewer grate. And now, I think this was the first one again. But well, they appear pretty decently. Also, um, I'm missing something. Because there is a thing there. Okay. Um, 
You know what? We, we can deal with that. We just grab the markers by a point and then we go back. Oh, speaking of, two yellow mobs at the same time. Slaves were once bought and sold like pigs here. Grab you. Got you. Next. Get away with your interface stuff. Grab a get. Shoot a get. Nice. The first ones look upon this capture with pride, exile. You hunt well. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it's going pretty well, I'd say. So I'm very curious to see now how things end up in maps. Whether no, the, the density of, of yellow and red mobs is, is indeed lower than it is in the campaign. Which would be an odd thing. Or if it's just a lot of complaining, but no real substance to it. Oh, if you haven't uh, seen it already, so the other day there was a massive community event, a uh, China versus international uh, racing event in Pavo Vaxel, first in, in, in a while. And Oh, it, it had five uh, Chinese players and five of the, the international uh, server uh, players uh, doing a race. First to uh, try and kill Piety, just a regular normal Piety in Act 3, as fast as possible. And then the, the five fastest players who achieved that actually went on to uh, a second race where they tried to defeat Act 5 Kitaba as soon as possible. It was very fun to watch. It's, uh, if you haven't seen it already, I, I would highly recommend that you check it out. Zigdi and QDog did the casting for it, you know, giving the blow-by-blow blow blow, uh, playback of everything, and they did a good job. So you know, look for it if you haven't uh, already, because it was nice to watch, and it was actually rather exciting as well. Okay, so I said, I'm going to go back for the uh, stupid beast. Bust. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense, but it sounds funny, so we're gonna roll with it anyway. Einhar is blocking uh, the way here. That's uh, that's the excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Oh, yeah, a bit, bit of explosive stuff. It would be so nice if skills just started triggering automatically. But the oh, cosmic damage taken is gonna take a little while longer to uh, to be found. And there we have the third of the busts. So that calls for a celebratory town stop. Also more nets. And Hagen is gonna get me a skill book. Nice. So, sell all the things. Uh, copper plate. That's not gonna be an upgrade. Uh, there's no links on here. I'm gonna be incredibly picky. I'm gonna continue Don't to do, do that. Skill point. That's gonna grab us mortal conviction. That's another nice boatload of life. And that is just for the flask bucket and for the gem bucket. And then we're gonna move on. Now, as soon as I find a, a four link in any of my, my gear bits, I'm gonna redo the uh, spectral shield throw. So no, trying to at least get a faster attack speed uh, on it. But for now, I figured no, it's there's just no point in putting too much effort into it since the damage we're doing is, is all right. And no bit of extra life gain from the life on it is it's all right as well. It's, uh, one of the nice things, of course, of the uh, Spectral Shield Throw is that you do have a lot of shards flying about. So if you fling it into a pack of monsters, you're going to hit uh, quite a number of them and therefore uh, get some extra life out of it. Even though it's strictly completely not needed. So we're down here for a trial. There's still no other reason for 
going into the catacombs. It's level 27 area, I'm 28, so just one level over leveled. The uh, bleeding damage seems to be uh, doing a pretty decent job here. But oh, if you consider it's 100 to 150 damage per second. So, yeah. But that's almost as much DPS as my main head itself does, or about two thirds of it. Well, when it kicks in, though, we do still have a rather low chance to cause bleeding. That's not for the foreseeable future, that's also gonna remain as it is. Eventually, I wanna kick that up a notch, but that's gonna be a bit, bit later. Detonates nearby corpses. Okay. And then you get stream of monsters. That, that combines nicely with the uh, detonating monsters, of course. Inbound spiders. Ah, I already have those. One head sword. Uh, that's a. That's a two-hander that is not entirely useful for me. Now, situations like these are where Spectral Shield Throw is going to be at its best. If you get completely surrounded, you can just blow up everything nearby. And that is another level. Uh, so. That concludes that one. I uh, actually want to grab Bloodless as well, just to uh, amp up my life uh, even further. Compared to some previous builds, I've, uh, this one is going to focus relatively early on on obtaining quite a sizable life pool. But well, Blood Magic, that kind of makes it useful. And the life regen that is in this build also helps it. Also, what's up there with the uh, ah Ancient Graffiti? There is nothing. No longer have a, a prophecy to get me scrolls for it, so it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, the uh, trial is doing a pretty good job of just hiding from me. It's a, it's a sneaky trial. Let's see, Lightning Shrine. Cool. And there is the entrance to the trial. Let's just follow in line rather than getting skewered by this thing. I think I rem remember reading in a patch note that metal looks better now, but they do look very shiny, the traps, the metal traps. So now you'll be completely distracted by their shininess and then they'll skewer you. Okay, so we got some, some four socketed items. They're not linked, but at least they have the right amount of sockets. Wow, let's not get skewered here. Pretty please? Yes. Wonderful. The Emperor must bear two blades. Hope in the left hand, surety in the right. I think I'm done here. Let's move on to the next area. So let's just put the items with the sockets in the box. I, I suspect I should be able to just obtain four links What's up? as well from drops. Gonna be slightly more efficient. Maybe even I can buy them. Uh, nope. Game, why have you forsaken me? So, next stage in the journey in the battle, battlefields, battlements. 
that's often somewhere to the left. Hey, there's a vegan in the in the map. A simple iron net. That's uh, is that a higher tier? Twenty-five to forty-six. That's even higher than what I have. Nice. You there? Let me bend your ear for a minute. I'm not even sure if I've seen Fagan already. So this could be our very first encounter. Let's see if we can make it memorable. It's a straight up fight. Nice. I like those. Ha! Best fun you can have on your feet. And there we are. Defeated. And from the corner of my eye, I spotted a, a yellow rare beast team up thing. Let's go catch it. Okay. Oh, oi, no, running away. Yep, sneaky, sneaky snake. I think that worked out. Yes. Ah. You are well prepared for the end. I am well prepared for the end. Good thing though, I'm, I'm, I'm only capturing the, the yellows and the reds. Speaking of yellows, there's another one here. So he no, he no longer speaks of them as stupid beasts. He's no longer taunting them, he's actually showing a little bit of respect. So that, that, that's good. Okay, that one is rather sturdy. Uh, hit my... Job, oh. hmm. I now will take the captured beast to the menagerie. I was gonna say, did my trap not take? Because in, in, in busy finds like that, there's just zero visual feedback because the, the trap is just too small. And the cooldown is done pretty quickly as well. Hey, we have a waypoint to tag and then we have a docks to get to. Level 27, I'm 29, so. Might be able to just get by with just mostly running through here. And only just throwing my shield at some of the slightly larger groups. Heralds. Of course not gonna use any of those. Uh, hey, should I be down there? Yes, I should be down there. One ribbon pool, one captain that needs to be murderized. Correction, that has been murderized. A uh, regular old jewel drop, increased physical damage with swords and increased projectile damage. We do do projectile damage with uh, our spectral. So one of the two mods is decent. The, the other one, of course, well, I don't really care about swords. Now I think for for jewels the best ones are probably going to be with just uh, like a, a life prefix and then a generic damage suffix. That way it just just works. And then no one of the, the the advantages of generic damage of over for example projectile damage is that it also affects the uh, the ailment damage. Hey, one blade flurry. We got a couple of goals here. First of all is to uh, find the ribbon spool. Or the other ribbon spool, the, the other big item. The uh, tomatetic sulfite, I think that's it. Second one is to grab a waypoint. Strictly not required, but it is no, useful to just have all the waypoints. Especially since now eventually we'll have to get back here for the uh, 
Captain Fairgrass quest if I care about doing it. There's something to the left. What is to the left? A oh, Furichi. Hey, the world's laziest assassin. A moment of your time. So, keep the target on low life heading towards the east. Oh, I think I can do that. I mean, Furichi missions are basically like capturing stupid beasts. Except, well, without the whole Pokemon aspect. And ah, there. Funny, these things don't count as beasts, even though they look pretty beastly to me. Avoid bearers, but ah, I think technically, technically they are demons. Okay. Let's just start by murdering all the add-ons. Being careful about not summoning any more uh, totems. Because, of course, you can't control the damage output that they have. Okay, yeah, now is the point where I just have to be a bit careful. I've got enough damage reflection that him just hitting me should be enough. Two, one. There we go. Patience. It's basically the main ingredient in killing one of these enemies. One vegan. Um, also, let's just start putting the lower tier nets in here. And then as soon as I have three or more, I can just sell three to upgrade it. But right now, I oh, don't really care. 25 to 46. No, that's... I should just m make sure to just get rid of all the uh, strong rope nets and then even then I'll slowly ease my way into the next tier. Uh, let's see. Uh, do I have a thing for jewels yet? Yes, I do. Nice. Hey. Back to the docks we go. Uh, I have a chat with Furichi. It's also mightily impressed. And there is the sulfite. Cool. So at least, at least now I have all the stuff needed to get to Solaris Temple. Um, hmm. Let's check out the bottom side first. And we found ourselves a corrupted side area. There is one prophecy I've got. If I find Val invaders. Oh no, wait, that's the Temple of Lunaris. Hmm. So, we're gonna run into that one shortly as well. I think next episode. I must say, I do like the, uh, the, the docks corrupted side area. It's, it's very docks y. This land has forgotten Karui's strength. I will remind it. Okay. Enemies can no longer leech life off of me. I don't think there's all that many mobs that actually leech life, but this does prevent it. Didn't the uh, um, Emperor Vol, the, the Wasteland version, didn't he have life leech? That used to be Akatir 13 red map. Somewhere top right of the map. I have no idea where it is since the map got shuffled up in 3.1. But I seem to remember that that Wasteland Vol was very sturdy because of the, the life leech. So if you have this one, then you can just completely ignore that. That is that is nice. Wonder if you're gonna get the uh, invisible. This one, yes. The ancient guardian. Well, this technically looks like a snake. It is not a snake. It's a construct. So well, if it's artificial, you cannot capture it. It might be stupid, but it is not a beast. Val Stormcall. I 
with the dog stairs always. No, you're running around and often you end up doing a full clear. Because you rarely run into where you need to be. This time though, being an exception. Nice. So then there's the, no, this whole part of the map over here that I could have gone accidentally into without any real effect, but I did not. Nice, nice. Right, let's uh, continue onwards towards a Solaris temple. It's going to be the final destination of the day. In the next episode, we can uh, take down the uh, Mr. Angry Dude in general gravities. And then piety. And then there's some some library and some dominus. That's gonna be for the next time. With a bit of luck, I'll actually have forgotten about the whole Lunaris prophecy thing until I set foot in it. And it's gonna be a nice pleasant surprise. It's always nice. So effectively, with that prophecy, if I remember it correctly, you get to fight the Vile Oversoul effectively as just a, a regular invader boss in the area. Regal or Ooh, wow, they don't drop all that often. I like it. This is the eternal way, pretty and lifeless. On the Berserker, though it's not a beastie. I think the Solaris Temple is going to be one of another one of those areas that just does not have a lot of beasts. Lunaris is also mostly demons, so I think that's also going to be a, a poor match. I wonder, maybe if there's going to be some, some random spawns that might make life a little better. Good thing is though, no, this one keeps good until level 35. So now we're now oh, heading towards the 20s. I think 35 is Dried Lake. Yeah, I think it's Dried Lake at the latest. Over here, exile. Maybe the tunnels, but I'm not entirely sure. Well, of course, rares are two levels above the area. So that means you don't really want to use them in any areas lower than 30 or above 33. Well, of course, if I have too many, I can just trade them up for the next tier. That's not a big deal either. Hey, Voltaic Seal, actually ran into them. That, that doesn't happen all that often. And and the Infernal Seal. thing is we still have to move forward for the Torah mission. Oh, and my pockets are full. At your service. Still one of the best things of having Vegan unlocked is that he is just a easily accessible vendor. And nothing here really was useful. I might as well just tuck the higher tier one in there as well. Uh, Val Stonko is in that box. Yeah. Neat. Hey, hello there, Ghosty. Yeah. Hey. Did not catch that one. Ah, there is the lair, and there's also a red mob ahead. That's gonna be fun. And though these are all beasties, they are corrupted and therefore they cannot be captured. Even though, though strictly speaking, if I were to capture one versus no kill it, I'm not entirely sure if Tora would even notice, but eh. 
Details, apparently they matter. Okay, so now most of my masters seem to be tied at nearly level 3. But none of them shows their face often enough to actually make me make it to level 3, Hondo. Okay. Okay, low enough that I actually want to throw the trap and then we murder him. And we got him. A rare ring with dexterity. Survivor, you are well prepared for the end. This is a fine <clears throat> Rare ring with all resists. I like it. Rare strength shield with all resists. Yeah, I've, I've, I've fallen into that trap before. That means I'm just going to get a the lowest of tiers of... Uh, shields of that with the lowest of tiers of resist mods. I wonder if there's going to be an update for that one to uh, maybe well, get you a better chance of getting higher tier bases and mods. Hey, diamond strength. Also, I don't really care too much about the shrine. So I might as well just empty my pockets. Happy to share my hard-earned wisdom. Hey. Uh, it's, a, it's a shield. I must identify the shields. It's uh, lower than what I have. Dual risk, bit of life. Double prefix. There is room for a third prefix. Unfortunately. I don't have yet, don't yet have access to Haku crafting, but this would be a pretty decent one. I'm actually gonna keep it around, and who knows, I might actually get to do something with it if I happen to encounter Haku soonish. Not a trap. And there is level two. So with a bit of luck, we're gonna run into the goddess of purity again. Taking a bath. And again, I don't suspect there are going to be many beasties here, except for the ones that are just going to be, you know, the uh, specific add-on spawns or something. I wonder if, if the yellow and red, if an area is filled with normal beasts, if the normal rares have a chance of getting upgraded into a yellow or a red whereas in an area like this where there's just simply no beasts then there's only that small chance of getting some add-ons to the map i wonder if, if maybe it's something like that a simple iron that's that is again the next tier Uh, 14% is not too bad on a two stain ring. Well, it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. And hello there, Essence. Muttering Essence of Sorrow tier 2, so it's not too high tier. So maybe I should just get out of the uh, stuff. Superior Culling Strike, that's always nice. Let's see. Next step in the journey. So I'm going to ignore these two live notes. Uh, I'm going to grab those when we head towards the Soul of Steel. But for now, I'm going to ignore that. And I'm simply just going to move forward. And then now we got the uh, Hematophagy for the uh, life leads. We have Crimson Dance for some Bleed Synergy. Then we have the uh, Shield Wheel Heal here. Heal here. Yes, words. Difficult. And then there's the, the Golem's Blood. And we can now go towards the Fury Bolts. And now basically be entertained for the remainder of Acts 3 and 4.
Oh yeah, it's one, one thing as well. I've been carrying Endurance Cry, the Endurance Cry with me. Thinking that now if I'm gonna use under, uh, Endurance Charges, it's gonna be useful to be able to summon them at a glance, but... Once we become a Juggernaut, it's, it, it should be so easy to obtain Endurance Charges that I don't think Endurance Cry is really going to add all that much. So it would actually be better to switch over to Rallying Cry, because Rallying Cry boosts my global damage. And in this build, it is difficult to obtain damage sources, so might as well go for it. I hate it when they give you rubbish bases, or rubbish implicit bases. Decent amount of light resistance, bit of all res. Nothing else that is really of any importance here. I mean, I could do with the lightning res, especially, you know, looking towards uh, piety. Right now, I don't need the additional decks, so I could get away with it. So I think I'm actually, despite you know, the, the implicit being more to the lower end than to the higher end, I think for now we, we can actually just keep it. You know, stash this one away for some nearby future. This is a small increase to your attack speed, cast speed, and of course, calling. Uh, uh, decent support, especially because of the uh, added damage that you get from it. I actually briefly considered putting it on my, my golem and my, uh, my totem, but later realized it's probably going to be better to just put maim and blind on there, so that the enemy will always be, bl uh, be maimed and blinded, so I can do more physical damage uh, to it. And also because, well, Culling Strike and Capturing Beasties, let's say the interaction might not always be desirable if you're late with throwing your, uh, your nets. But, well, something to consider if you uh, are not really going to use too many mobs around you or just using it yourself. For now, though, I've reached the Solaris Temple. That's a, a nice place to call it. So next episode, Lunaris Temple and all the good stuff that comes with it. So for now, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.